For the Large. leather Louis? Oh my. Oh. Leather Louis. Right. No, these are topics. These are for the papyrus ones. I wasn't. I was just. <laughs> Sounds like you were already confused. You might need a repunch. Just double check the spacing on that one. Make sure that it lines up with. Yeah, I would. Yeah, because we did that last time and it was like the wrong one. I think I threw out. But the we other should have thrown it out because we don't want to use it ever again. Oh, good. I still have to punch him. <laughs> All right, so let's get in here and we'll view areas. I'm gonna background real quick. So I got an eyeball on him. Where we move our way down the pattern.
Noticing it. What happened? I just punched. I just punched Dr. Wolf. <laughs> oh, because you punched all the way down instead of doing the just the three? Yeah, instead of doing the six, I did the eight. I'll set it to the side for now. Might. Could use it. Well, yeah, we will once we get our wood ones up. Oh, right. some of these areas are so small, it's hard to. Put them properly. Well, it's coming along. For sure. Slowly but surely. Okay, there we go. So, kind of some of the progress thus far. There we go. Kind of see all of it. Um, so, yep. Now this is all pretty much beveled, backgrounded up top here. Just got that lower section to start working on. And then we can't forget our two little scraggler flowers down there. Those are going to be fun to bevel <laughs> once I get to them because they're so small, so intricate. Oh. Oof. Yeah. There's just like so much going on that I feel like it's so easy to get lost in the design. Hope I'm not like missing any major areas. Okay. 
probably leave the interior for a minute. We'll just go around these exterior components of the design. Sorry for your good luck there. So sorry, my feet were like right there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess if uh, we decide that we really like this design, then we can maybe look to 3D print a stencil for it or something. And then I'm not really sure what to do with like the back. So I've got like a big old you know blank canvas back here. Um, this is gonna be a journal by the way so this is going to be the front i already have it carved out in the center um so that it can fold over that's kind of how it's gonna gonna sit and so there's gonna be some intricate stitch work here on the back but i'm not really sure what to do or with the spine but i'm not really sure what to do on the back here so i could do um like a black basket weave uh or leave it blank i don't know I don't know. We'll, chaos monster back here. Okay. We'll see, I guess. First time chat. Welcome in. Oh, well, hello. The Hoy of Elfimum. Elfimum. Altamon? Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a lovely Monday. Unless you're in Australia, then it's already Tuesday. Yeah. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Cause yeah, I guess the international dateline is in the Pacific. It's the book stabby art thingy. Yeah. Over here? The cradle? Is that what you're talking about? It's called the punching cradle. <laughs> punching cradle. Book stabbing art thingy. I love it. What the <laughs> Yes, I'm just making, crunching some signatures, so this is some sketch paper that we have. Um, we here. I'm doing these papyrus journals. Um, so, 
that'll be uh yeah so this is a uh, real papyrus it's been hand painted um they'll just have a, a coptic stitch because egypt is where the coptic originated so that was fun even that's though Coptic is something that's much later. But you're in Germany? Holy cow, what time is it there? That's like... Thursday. That's insane. Probably Tuesday. I get home but the still, night. yeah, that's like, what, like <laughs> three in the morning? Daggum. Well, you know, welcome, welcome all the way from, uh, from Germany. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I catch German... 45. Holy cow. Dang. That's an early morning. Yeah, that's crazy. I guess it's a lot. It's a lot later than I thought. It was. I thought it was like 3.30, but 5.45. I know people who wake up that early. <laughs> Not me. That's, that's way too early for me. <laughs> Ditto. Uh, We're night owls over here. I was going to say, yeah, when I catch like German streamers, it's usually my morning. So I guess that's like their evening. But holy cow. Welcome in. Yeah, welcome, welcome. So yeah, we uh we primarily bookbind around here. Um I slept the whole last day. Holy cow. And so yeah, so my, my wife over there, she's the one working the punching cradle. She's gonna prep the signatures, the the pieces of paper that are gonna end up going into this journal here. Um and then we have a whole bunch on the back bench. Um, but I do a lot of traditional um, books as well. So here's a project I'll just kind of show you real quick. Um, this is a library binding that uh, I've been working on. It's going very, very slowly. Um, but this is a autobiography from Benjamin Franklin. Um, but anyway, so that's us. If you're new here, that's uh, primarily what we do is book binding. And I like to try and find ways to incorporate uh, the leather working into my my books, so hence the hence the journals. Like seventeen hours. Oh, that would like that makes me sick when I like sleep for too long. <laughs> Sounds really interesting. I like feel more tired when I sleep too long. Oh, I have hyperinsomnia. Oh really? Yeah, that, that's, sucks. that really sucks. Yeah, you'd have to to sleep seventeen hours. Holy cow, that is crazy. So I always feel sleepy or sleep too long. Oh. Turn out some sleep. I can like never sleep is my problem. But somehow I've been able to make it work. I do a lot of like sleep tracking with uh with my smartwatch, and uh, I just like never ever ever get deep sleep or any REM. So bad. So I probably have like some type of insomnia, but not hyper insomnia. My brain is not like, you slept enough. It's more like, you didn't sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep some more. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's crazy. I'm not that bad with my sleep. My sleep habits are really not good, but... Yes, master brain. <laughs> That's crazy, though. Well, but it's cool, though, you know. Normally, we only have, like, Europeans pop in if I'm, like, streaming very early in the morning. <laughs> so, welcome in. Welcome. And I haven't streamed in the morning in a long time. We're kind of, I don't know. Parents? Yeah, we're parents, so we <laughs> we don't get to start really working until we put our kids to sleep, which we put them to sleep pretty early. We put them to sleep at 7. 
And so it's 10 o'clock here now. We're just getting into the swing of things. Yeah, I would like to do like more like day streams, but German takes over the stream. Yeah, it's very unusual for us. <laughs> um, but yeah, so when I do stream, like I said, in the morning, we have like toddlers running around getting into stuff and tried it before. It's good, though, because there's like a lot of people on. Whereas like, as you can see right now, it's pretty quiet, pretty pretty dead right now, but I guess it's kind of understandable. Most people are asleep now. Yeah, we're, so we're in the Mountain West um, time zone. So everybody on the east side of the United States, it's like, what, midnight for them now? It's only like the Californians that are still awake. <laughs> be honest, I thought these book things were cut out from it. Oh, really? Those books things were cut out from it. Not from... I don't think I... Sure. Like, you thought that the... Oh, the flower oh. on the cover. You thought they were cut out? Yeah, so they are cut. Um, ish. So I've already gone through with my swivel knife here. And this is what I use to, like, carve um, those lines. And then um, it's these beveling tools that kind of give it that three-dimensional shape that pops. So, so they are sort of cut. Some people call what I'm doing here uh, carving. Some people really don't like that terminology. <laughs> but... But yeah, so leather, leather carving. No, but I really like it. So, you know, you'll you'll slowly see the shapes um, pop more and more and more as more layers of detail are added to it. So as of right now, I'm just kind of adding that rough shape. Call it thingy things, stabs, and cover thingy. <laughs> I mean, that's close enough. Descriptive enough, at least. Well, it's the most intricate design he's done. I've done some, he has done some other. Yeah, but I've never taken the time to go this detailed. Um... But yeah, so we do other, like I said, uh, traditional bookbinding. And uh, I have done a Harry Potter set and an Aragon set in the past. And I like to do this exact same type of leather carving, even on those books. So they, like my Aragons, will have three-dimensional dragons carved into them. And... Uh, the Harry Potter designs are medieval crests, more or less. Medieval crest inspired, we'll, we'll put it that way. <laughs> Kohai's Wisdom 109. If you don't know what it is, just call it the thingy thing. Hey, you know? Makes sense. Fair enough.
Oh, it sounds like you know your English very well. Did you just uh, pick it up in school there, or did you ever live outside of Germany? Or grow up speaking, I guess, English? You do the drawing cartoon characters. Oh, really? Do you stream then yourself? Oh, you're half American. Okay, nice. <laughs> Sweet. So good when I say like geography terms, you aren't completely lost. <laughs> Maybe next year, huh? Yeah, I say go for it. It's uh, not too bad. We haven't really been streaming for very long ourselves, um, but it's been nice. When did we start streaming? It really hasn't been very long. July. July, yeah. July. These ones are the blue ones, right? The red journals are the... Yeah, they should be the same spacing, though. Currently working on a comic. Hey! And a VTuber, so probably takes some time. Yeah. Definitely got, yeah, a lot is going on. <laughs> Gotta take one project at a time. But a comic, that's pretty cool. You know, the private sector for, um... Making comics is, like, definitely growing. Like, it's getting pretty big. It used to be, like, really hard for small comics to get published, but nowadays it's been really, really taken up. Which is great. I mean, I love to see that, personally, that you don't necessarily need a huge publishing company anymore to get your, your ideas out there. That's super cool. I know my brother was talking about some private publishers, but now I can't remember. <laughs> I, I do remember. Oh, wow. It looks like I missed a line right here. That down. You should have seven. Hi. Sorry, we've been trying to play with different angles. I don't really know how to get like a good angle to see what I'm working on. You really have a nice wife, and she has a really nice husband. Oh, well, thank you. Hey, well, thanks for the follow, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, she's pretty great. Guess I'll keep her. What? Thank you. <laughs> so I want different colors for... Oh, you do? I do. Like different threads? Yeah. How do I know that you won't mix it? I probably will. Why? What, what threads did you want? Like, yeah, every single one, a different color? Maybe not every single one, but some of them have, like, colored interior. I wanted to match the thread to the, uh, the paper that's on the inside. 
Oh, okay. So, I mean, I guess that was pretty easy in the last level. Okay. You want to just get a example and kind of show it what we're looking at? The folks at home can see sure. what oh, we're talking about. Using the red one. I'm just going to. Oh, just put it, just take blue. Okay. No, that, the angle for my I'm desk over here. Always here. spread around love and knives. Hey. <laughs> you know, I could always use more knives. Knives are good to spread around. You can never have too many knives. That is uh, definitely one thing I have learned in, uh, in crafting. No, I have like a million different knives. And each knife does like maybe one small thing slightly differently, but you know, you have to have it for that one. And they each cost $200. Well, if you want good <laughs> steel, then. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, red box. <clears throat> one of my red box. I do everything up until the sewing. I cannot sew this. I've tried to teach her. She does like one and then quits. <laughs> and then forgets everything and then picks it up and tries to do it again and has forgotten everything. I'm going to flip it over to you for a second. Um, so this is Osiris. This is uh, this is from one of first work of the dead. Uh, and then we just have some, some paper. Got some fun, fun colors. So I like to match the. I have to speak up because the. Oh, because the mic's all the way over there. Anyways. Oh yeah, I just like. To so that's all I need that I can. So I guess. Yes, Egypt. So, um, I guess a little bit of background on me. I I'm an ancient Near Eastern historian, so that's what I got my degree in. Um, and so we do have a lot of like our designs are historic in nature because I'm just a huge history nerd <laughs> hence like the name of our studio tiamat artisans uh named after tiamat the babylonian goddess of chaos but she is also well known um in the dungeons and dragons community as the mother of dragons but and either one works because I kind of wanted like a subtle sort of pop culture reference. <laughs> yeah, I history is everything I do. No, I do find it a lot of fun because we, we take a lot of like these journals and things to art shows and places and um, any willing ear that ventures close enough to our table. I just tell them stories all day long about all of the different designs and things. Okay, Stephen. Yeah. So, um, the two so match the red to the Word on the end. Except one Ani will have green thread. And then the other two brown and gold are just. I think you can pick. Okay. I think so. I'll just. I will move this camera back because. Nice. No, My 
my messy desk. Okay, I think we got most of the backgrounding done. So that means here soon I can move into... Well, I'll finish up beveling those small roses down the corner. I did study psychology in art. Which, and I think everybody should do, like, at least a little bit of art with themselves, you know? It's just... Something refreshing about the creative process. Exactly, right? I feel like everybody should just... Should, should make something. Maybe not, like, strictly in the art sense of, like... I don't know. But, like, crafting, I guess, as well, you know? But just be making something. There, there's something, yeah, therapeutic about it. Yeah, so no matter who you are, no matter what it is that you primarily do. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so now we'll just bevel those ones, and then we can start working on the flowers, giving them their their actual shape. Starting to add those details. I know that my art teacher when I was twelve ruined art for me. Really messed up. Uh, can happen sometimes <laughs> in the in the art sphere. But yeah, I'm sorry you had such a negative experience. My art teacher's been pretty, pretty bland. <laughs> Is that your high school? Yeah. Well, she's an art teacher. Isn't she required to say that? I'm just kidding. I believe in you. <laughs> paint some things. I fill in the blanks. Close enough. He's one of those only my art is right. Oh, so sometimes poured water on my... What? He ripped apart a drawing? He burned a painting, which set the whole classroom on fire. <laughs> uh, that is a little messed up. That's a, that's a wee bit extreme, I'd say. type of signatures do you want for that rose? Because these here are for your leathers. These red ones are. Just, let's just do sketch. Sketch? So like, yeah. Why do you have sketch? Uh. Yeah, that's crazy though. Yes, you did tell us he was messed up. Was that was that in America or was that in uh in Germany? Is in Germany? Ah, that's crazy. It's a bit extreme. <laughs> but you know, it reminds me of like the C'est long de refuses. Is that how they can say it? The what? I don't know. You're Canadian. You know how to speak French. I don't speak French. <laughs> um, in Paris, back in the day, right? Like, 
they have very very strict requirements for their art and so that's kind of sounds like you know 1700s france where they would <laughs> where they started the salon salon de refuses is it's very heavy american accent on that but um yeah so what it was was they started uh creating like their own separate museum apart from the official paris museum of art and uh, a lot of famous like paintings came out of there a lot of uh monet paintings um went there so For real? Yeah. Yeah, that was like a that was like a thing. And eventually, you know, kinda out of those movements you would get some like famous names like um uh P -p 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 Picasso. But I mean Picasso's gonna be way later. Like the anti art one? Yeah, those that's kind of more modernist type stuff. But um, some of like your impressionist drawings were the first ones to start coming out of that movement. So like I said, they, they cause the, the, in Paris, they very much had like this, this idea of what art had to be. Um, and I don't know, in one way, I, I can't, you know, dog it too much. Like they, they did have their orthodox view of what they wanted art to be. Um, but I do think that there were some other interesting movements that were going on within the impressionist uh, movement but yeah they would take like those paintings they would burn them um some of them would cause like riots you know people would see them particularly edward monet's olympia uh there were like literal riots so if you do a google search on that uh edward monet olympia you'll, you'll kind of see what i mean um but yeah they, they yeah which one are you thinking of well yeah, and Claude Monet as well, you know. <laughs> Maybe teacher was a time traveler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, that's, like, so many crazy times where, like, composers, you know, like, Mahler were, like, chased out of venues. kind of weird for us to think today that like Mahler would be considered like controversial edgy music but you know <laughs> burn it <laughs> Yeah, those are certainly interesting times. And, uh, you know, in all honesty, like, I think them trying to fight so hard against um, the art movement is what made it so famous, right? And that was kind of the thing, is that eventually the Salon David Refusis, again, heavy American accent, uh, my bad, but um, eventually that became more of a destination than the, the Paris Museum of Art. Because, you know, like I said, it was just so famous these 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 paintings that were considered unworthy to enter the official museum sorry random thought what was it that that dennis was talking about that he put on his finger to count papers that's just like a little silicone thimble what was it yeah it was uh it's called a finger caught Oh, okay, I got one more. I'm, like, so excited to start, like, just... smooth beveling these petals, but I got one more little guy right here. So yeah, sorry for the history lesson, but again, I'm just like a huge history nerd. <laughs> it doesn't like matter what time period of history I've studied a lot of. Mainly ancient, but yeah, he studied a lot of modern history. But he likes 
Yeah, I don't really find modern history super interesting, but I've picked up on it here and there. Maybe a little fuzzy, but you know. But yeah, European history can be a can be a wild ride. <laughs> Especially some of those art movements. Okay. There we go. Everything's beveled. Still have some decisions to make about the backgrounding, exactly what I'm going to do with it. Um, but we'll probably revisit that in a minute. Um, I don't know. I guess I could just, yeah, force bevel in the center here. But I'll get back to that. Um, now is the time to try and see if we can get these flowers to really pop. I ask. Yeah. Punch the hole. No. I don't even have, have that. I have a. What? That I also don't want to. Because I have signature. I have a set of signatures for one like that. Well then, let's put it on one of the red journals because this one I want to not have that. Um, yeah. Oh, I mean, that's fine. Okay. Okay. For one of the ones that. Just I'm putting so much like work into this. I don't want it to like be subpar. How's that one subpar? The old Louis design. Yeah. Oh, you're talking these ones. Just the one that the the hourglass shape. Yeah, these ones. All right, we'll show it on camera so you guys know what we're Sorry, talking about. Sorry, I we. So this the is one. the stitching pattern that's gonna go on the back of the journal. So, like I said, it's kind of more intricate. Um, yeah, and then we have sewing design for the these, for the book itself. But then this one is slightly different. This is a new one that he did, and that he's been putting on. Ooh, those colors look really blown out. Sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> these cameras struggle sometimes, but um, yeah, there's that stitch so, pattern. Anyways, so, anyways, that's all we're talking about.
Yeah, this right here is like one of my favorite steps. You get to really see the roses pop after this. I wonder if there's a few places I can use that undercut pedaler too, actually. That would be good to lift some of the pedals. I'm sorry the lighting isn't very good. My lamp, the old lamp I used, broke on me. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> okay, and then this is like the hard part. I have to look at it, kind of make some decisions here. What goes over and what goes under. Okay, something kind of like that. We'll go in and smooth it out. Tap, tap, tap. Hi, Jake. Out of the lurk. Minute. Come out of the lurks for a minute. How's it going? Oh, I am so excited for this. This is going to be the <laughs> coolest journal I've made thus far, I think. I don't know what you're on about. My lurk is functioning just fine. 
How's you and the kids do? Well, the kids are sleeping, so that's, you know, the best part of um, every day. But, uh... <laughs> Now we got our kid, uh, our son's doing t-ball. And so that's been kind of fun. Take him out and play catch with him. He gets really frustrated because he's like, you know, only three. Four. Four. Four now? He is four. Daggum. Four, almost four and a half. How did that happen? I don't know. Anyways, so he's four. <laughs> but uh, his uh, coordination skills are uh, still developing, you know. So he gets really frustrated with himself, but. Yeah. He can be hard on himself. <laughs> Stop blinking, Dad. You missed a year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Where was I? Oh, kids are fun. Just a ball of joy every day. Did I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Our daughter is... She's two. And uh, she's already starting to like pick up on her letters. More and more. Which is crazy. But, I mean, we had her brother practically. I mean, he was pretty much reading by three. Yeah. But they just, that's just something that's interesting. Not that we forced them. Yeah, trust me, we're not those parents who are like... Wrapping their knuckles to try and get them to develop early <laughs> or anything. Uh, they just kind of picked it up themselves, but I at least was impressed. I was like, wow, I didn't realize you could get like three year olds to start reading Dick and Jane. And it was imperfect for sure, but you know, still. <laughs> Okay, and there we go. It's a little blurry in the camera, but nonetheless, you can still see. It's just fun. They just start to pop a little bit more. You know? Oh, but my back's killing me. And then the, the leaves, I think, are really, really cool once you start to add the detail to 